Hello, digital dealer. Um, today, I'll be talking about vehicle listing ads, and we have a great agenda for you guys today. Let me click through to the agenda. Um, first, I'll do a little bit about the speaker, just so you know a little bit about me and where I'm coming from. Then we'll talk about industry trends, talk about vehicle listing ads, of course, uh, the vehicle listing ad setup, best practices. I'll go through a case study that we did, and then uh, I'll give you some options beyond Google. And then we'll have a final thoughts where I'll wrap everything up and you'll have a nice and neat summary of action points to take home with you as you start setting up and running vehicle listing ads for yourself. So a little bit about me. Um, that's me on the, on the left from 1991. Um, I've been involved in the digital space for a very long time, starting my first company in 1997. And uh, the company I represent today, Smart Sites, I started in 2011 with my younger brother, you can see our starting there on the right side. Um, today, Smart Sites has over 300 full-time employees. Uh, we've been in business over 11 years, as you just saw, hundreds of five-star reviews and thousands of clients that we do marketing for. Um, I'm gonna, uh, for today's session, of course, we're gonna be talking about VLAs, but um, I just wanted you to know my background so you could see where I'm coming from. And uh, really, uh, vehicle listing ads is, is, although the product itself is new, uh, the idea of marketing on, on obviously on Google and search ads and really marketing through what are pretty much shopping ads is, is not a new concept. So it's something we've been doing for a very long time and very excited to introduce that to you guys today. Uh, before we jump in, let's just talk about industry trends so we kind of uh, get everyone on the same page and uh, level set everything before jumping in, in, into vehicle listing ads themselves. Industry trends. Um, so now more than ever, people are starting their research for a new car online. This should come as no surprise to you guys, but of course, uh, the, the pandemic um, jump-started all of this. Right now, uh, as of the study, which was from six months ago, 89% of research for new cars happens online. So of course, you still have the 11% who don't do it online, but as you can see, the majority do. And I think that number will reach very close to 100 in the, in the coming years. For those that do re research cars online, search is a top online source uh, used, used for the research, of course. So 78% uh, use search to research a new ve vehicle and the growth in uh, Google searches for cars to buy actually grew 400% year over year. And that's, uh, uh, I believe that data is um, 20, late 2020 to late 2021. So uh, obviously more and more research and uh, um, consumer behaviors are happening online and um, not only that but the the number one place where people go for this stuff is search right uh, if you if you're looking for a car or you're looking for a dealership or heck you're looking for the new LG TV right uh, the first thing people go to is search primarily Google search so that's that's why all this is important and that's before we jump into vehicle ads uh, themselves uh, I just want to level set and Kind of uh, demonstrate why why it's so important, why VLAs are so important. Um, so uh, not only as we just saw, shoppers are online, but they're actually purchasing online too. So 16% of new car buyers ordered or purchased their vehicle completely online in 2021. So that was obviously completely new. Um, it's it's uh, I think it's something they'll continue to move in that direction uh, as we kind of eased off of COVID now. Uh, people are back in the dealership and automotive is one of those few products that people like to actually touch and feel but it's also important to note that more and more uh, uh, more and more things are com are happening completely online not just research but the purchase themselves so so reaching car shoppers online with the right inventory and information will become key obviously if this is where the consumers are going if this is where they're going to search i want to buy a honda accord right this is where you want to be so that's why vehicle listing ads are so important and um, i'm going to talk to you guys about generally how they work today the, the setup and then we'll cover some best practices and case studies so just as an introduction to vehicle listing ads this is what they look like so if you look on the right side, if you search for 2019 SUVs for sale, uh, the dealerships that are actually um, participating in the VLA program, those are the cars that are coming up. Um, the reason the reason this is uh, so powerful is because it's it's literally like shopping ads that that Google 
uh, rolled out 10 years ago that have now become so successful is that people uh, search for a car and they see the actual picture of the car, they see the price of the car, and they see the miles. Um, and here, th this is a better better um, better image for it. So they're literally, these are the, the points that make up vehicle listing ads. Uh, for those that have gone on Google and have ever shopped for any electronic, uh, TV, uh, microwave, you've probably seen something very similar. So the way uh, vehicle listing ads work is actually very similar to Google shopping ads in general. And it's actually powered by the Google Merchant Center, which is very similarly. But these are the main components that make up uh, vehicle listing ads. It's the vehicle image, it's the vehicle location, make and model, price, the name of the dealership, of course, and the and the mileage. So, <clears throat> uh, the reason the reason um, the reason it's important to to highlight these is that as you can imagine, this works a lot better for used cars than new cars, just because new cars everyone is going to have pretty much the same image, uh, the same price, right? The MSRP and no miles in the car. On the used cars, you actually are able to differentiate a lot better. So this product, uh, VLAs in general, although you could do new and used cars, it works the best on used cars. Um, cool, so uh, this is again, another example of how, how, how it works. Uh, in, in terms of um, the setup component, as opposed to Google Ads, there's no keyword needed. Right? You're not bidding on that specific keyword that's 2019 SUVs for sale. Um, you just feed your inventory into Google and Google themselves determines which cars to show for what searches. Um, at the same time, it, it's powered by Google's auction time bidding. So using machine learning, as long as you're feeding your conversion data and you have everything feed it, uh, fed into Google, um, it's actually triggering auction time bidding. So um, the the Google algorithm on the fly will bid higher or lower for that individual based on their their the individual's assumed propensity to convert on your website. So really advanced stuff that's at your fingertips without really uh, uh, that much of a complex setup. Um, the product is also complementary to text ads. So for example, in this uh, search, 2019 SUVs for sale. Um, <coughs> You have obviously the vehicle listing ads at the top, uh, but at the same time, some consumers might just want to see a website with just SUVs for sale, right? So they may not want to scroll through uh, the vehicle listing ads. So it's important to know that one doesn't take away from the other, and it's still very important to do both VLAs, search ads, and all the other different types of marketing. So this is not a replacement or iteration of Google ads, uh, Google search ads, as, as you know it. It's a new marketing platform. That's, that's the way I would view it as like Instagram is to Google, right? This is kind of like a completely, even though it's part of Google ads, I would view it as a completely different platform just because it, it works so differently. And it, like I said, does not take away from search ads or anything else. Um, so here's an example of that. So the vehicle ads are actually uh, served alongside the search ads. So you see in this example here, and it's actually from, from uh, Google's data, advertisers who did both search ads and vehicle ads saw in, an increase in conversion versus doing one or the other. So you actually get a benefit from the consumer seeing your inventory above, seeing your dealership. In this case, the first one's Park Place, for example, or Big Star Honda. And then right below it is an ad for, let's say, Big Star Honda, right? So that's, that's uh, that it's, it, they're very complementary and enhance each other. All right, so let's talk about actual setup for VLAs. So uh, VLAs themselves are really cool once they're set up and running, but let's, let's make sure we go through um, the setup. So this is how it works. So uh, first, and well, I guess before before you even begin this process, um, you have to um, you have to submit uh, with Google uh, form to to be allowed to do it. So before before even this, there was a there's like a beta opt in that's slowly going away. So hopefully by the time you see it, you won't have to do step zero. Um, so step one is you have to create a Merchant Center account. So it's very similar to advertising any kind of. Um, um, product in Google Shopping Ads, like I said, TV, microwave, and whatnot. So you create a Merchant Center account. Then you have to submit an allow form with Google to actually convert your Google Merchant Center account from a regular account to an automotive account. After that, you, you um, complete the opt-in into a vehicle ads program and do the setup in your account, which, uh, which involves putting in your address, verifying the phone number. There's a couple of verification steps there. 
Step number three is probably the most complex step. So you have to provide Google a feed in a specific format that they ask for. That feed has to contain all the items that we spoke about earlier, the, the image of the car, the price of the car, miles, uh, and ultimately has to have a link to the VDP of the vehicle. Google's very specific in this feed, so this might take a little bit to actually put your feed together, get it into Google, get them to review it. They do an initial quality review, and then a review of your actual inventory that you're trying to submit to it. And of course, you want to submit it in a way where you're refreshing the feed data on a regular basis, so you're not displaying cars that have already sold. Step four is you set up conversion tracking. That's a that's a no brainer. So if you're in Google, if you already have a Google Ads account, you could use the exact same Google Ads account, and hopefully you already have conversion data set up in there. If not, you want to make sure all your conversions are set up. So you should be setting up things, obviously uh, VDPs, uh, contact forms, phone calls, store visits. Everything should be feeding into uh, Google Ads. And uh, for this example, for uh, for VLA specifically. Uh, even though I would still say to import VDPs as a conversion, you want to set it as a secondary conversion, not a primary, because you don't really, for the, for the VLAs, you don't really want to be measuring VDPs because every click will be a VDP, if that makes sense, right? Every time someone clicks on a car, they're landing on the, on the actual vehicle page for that car. So um, you, you'd still want to record those, especially if you're running other things in your Google Ads account, but you'd, you'd want to make sure that um, it's a secondary conversion uh, action and not being used in Google's machine learning. Last step is when you have your Google Ads account, you have your conversions in there, it's linked up to Google Analytics, you have your feed approved within the Merchant Center, now you gotta link everything up. So you actually create a vehicle ads campaign within your Google Ads account. It lets you select the Merchant Center feed that's gonna feed into it. Um, that's the, the stuff we set up in the first part of the setup and then you're good to go. So the, the setup process does take a while. Um, it's been getting a little bit quicker, but I would say um, if there's no hiccups and you have your, your inventory feed ready to go, you could expect it to take a couple weeks. Um, if you're starting from scratch and trying to create your, your, uh, your feed and don't have a feed provider and whatnot, um, I'd, exp I'd set aside uh, maybe four to six, maybe even more, uh, four to seven weeks uh, from the time you start the process to, to the time everything's running. All right, and uh, before we get started, uh, these are points we kind of covered a little bit, but before we get started, remember vehicle ads are complementary to search text ads. You don't want to go in and stop all your other advertising when you enable these, right? Um, if, if anything, uh, once VLAs are running successfully, it's a good replacement for the third-party sources you get your, uh, your traffic and leads from, like car gurus of the world, but certainly is not a replacement for search ads and some of the other Google Ads stuff you're running. Number two, vehicle ads uses maximized conversion value and raw strategy. So it's uh, Google's machine learning automatically optimizes your bidding and optimizes your conversions. But for that to work, you need to obviously have conversions and you need to have conversion values. If you put in that uh, uh, um, uh, a conversion as a VDP or SRP and the conversion value is the same as going to a store, uh, the machine learning is going to work terribly and you're going to get terrible results, right? You want to tell Google that a store visit is worth this much to me, or at the very least it's worth a hundred times more than this kind of other action. So that has to be obviously uh, set up for you to get the, the maximum results. And uh, of course, it's a feed-based solution, so you have to make sure your feed is always up-to-date and healthy. You don't want to be showing uh, cars that are sold. You don't want to be showing wrong information. So when setting up your feed, you always have to think about how is this feed going to be updated with fresh data, how often you want it to be updated. Obviously, at least at least once a day would be would be a good start. All right, so you have the VLA set up. Now let's talk about best practices, and this really drills down to more complex things that I haven't seen a lot of agencies do, but at the same time, VLAs are fairly new. So let's let's go through it just, just so we know what we're doing. So even though it seems simple, they could just set up a VLA campaign and just let it run, which, which is the case, uh, the best practices here are very similar to regular Google Shopping campaigns, which people in the automotive world are not as familiar with, but those who do e-commerce are very familiar with. So within the VLA campaign, you could just set one campaign, all your products, and let it go. But at the same time, you could actually subdivide it in a lot of strategic ways that lets you bid less and more for different things, set different budgets, 
and really have a lot more um, ability to control how you spend your BLA budget. So in this example, you, uh, it's a Ford dealership. You can actually set it up as uh, you have the F-150 there. You could set up as low mileage, high mileage ones, right? Uh, you could set up uh, completely, you could really subdivide it any way that, that it makes sense for you to tweak the marketing, right? Do you, do you want to do you want to be able to bid higher more aggressively on your low mileage F-150s or high mileage ones, right? If you do, it makes sense to set it up this way. Uh, another example here is if you're a dealership that sells multiple brands, you could, you could set it up in this way. You could make the ad group SUVs or sedans, for example, and then you could have your brands under it. And under that, you could create labels. So what this lets you do is you could say, oh, I want to spend more on this year's mod 2020 models or anything be older than this year, right? So this gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, all in all, there's a lot of other examples of how the campaign structure could be set up. So uh, if, if, you're, if you're already running VLAs and looking to do more advanced things, definitely reach out and I'd be more than happy to share the more advanced implementations. All right, the do's and the don'ts. So this is, this is a good one. Um, I could send the deck out later to anyone who's uh, who's interested. Uh, but these these couple of slides are very good to kind of uh, to screenshot, take a picture, write down some way, have these with you, right? Um, and let me move my my face from here just so you guys could see it better. So let's go through the do's. So the do's make sure to include in conversions all user actions are valuable. So I, I talked about this before, but you really want to record all your conversions to make sure Google's machine learning works the best, right? If you're not, if you have chat on your website and you're not measuring chat activity um, and Google's bringing you a lot of chats, but they don't know they're bringing you a lot of chats, right? A certain demographic might be chatting a lot more, but if you're not recording it, Google doesn't know to bid on that demographic better, uh, higher than, than the other. So um, if you're missing any conversion actions, you're doing yourself a disfavor, not just for VLAs, but uh, really for all your, all your uh, Google and campaigns with any, any marketing that you're doing. Uh, number two, make sure you're tracking the conversion action that is the deepest, closest to your business end goal, right, to maximize the ROI. Um, you don't want to just, oh, I'll just miss, measure time on site or non-bounce or anyone who didn't visit more than three pages, right? That, that's very top funnel. You want to get to the bottom of the funnel as possible. So in this case, uh, phone calls, chats, and store visits are usually the best. And uh, Google Ads has gotten very good at measuring store visits, so I would, I would highly recommend including that. Um, and that, of course, that is the next point. So include store visits in your conversion. Uh, store visits allow you to measure online to offline impact. Um, and like I said, it used to be, for those who have been doing this for a while, you used to have to measure it with beacons and a lot of inconvenient ways. Uh, Google's gotten really good to, in natively measuring this. So if you have an Android phone or even if you have an Apple phone and you use Gmail, by coming into a store, Google now knows that you, you store visited and they know your past behavior across multiple devices so they've gotten really good at tracking it and this is not something uh, that they charge you more for this is something that's natively available within google and of course for don'ts don't use vdp as a conversion especially one that you're optimizing for because obviously every click is a conversion and then google's uh, machine learning does provides absolutely no value because they'll bid on everyone equally all right, some more some more do's and don'ts on the next page. Um, so you want to avoid setting the same conversion value for all your conversions. Obviously, a chat and a store visit are not the same. The store visit should be more valuable. If you do know the value of each, like you know that someone comes through my door, the dealership is worth three hundred dollars to me. You should put in the actual values. If you don't, you should put in ratio. So. If, if you don't know the values, you, you know that a store visit is maybe 10 times more valuable than a live chat, let's say, or 20 times more valuable. So you put it as ratio. So store, store um, live chat becomes 20, your store visit becomes 200. You never want to put just one uh, as a value for all your conversion actions. Um, next, uh, the, as the do's, provide conversion values which are representative to goals you're trying to accomplish. Um, so, so that's, that's a good one as well. So you don't want to be measuring things that is not a goal. So, um, it very rarely happens, but there is such a thing as over measuring, right? If your campaigns are meant to sell cars and you have, a I don't know, um, um, you have a, a, a blog post about reach to reach out to us to have us sponsor your, uh, 
your kids' sports teams, right? Um, that shouldn't be a conversion you're measuring because that's not part of a goal in this campaign. Um, and then the last one, if you track conversion to sales data for all your conversion action, here's a nice formula framework to, uh, to figure out how much each lead is worth to you. So you could back, work your way backwards and set the right values um, for each conversion. All right, so I'm going to jump into a case study. So this is a very big uh, uh, Lithia store that uh, we piloted VLAs for um, a little while ago. This must it might be from earlier this year. So this is a typical VLA campaign we ran for them. So you could see that it's uh, um, I forget what time frame this this is for, but it's it's five thousand dollars out of a total total seventy six thousand that they're spending. Right. So again, don't just run VLAs and stop everything else. Right. Uh, but more so, you could kind of see the average metric. So with the $5,000, we actually got 3,000 clicks to a website, which are people who are actually very interested in that car. They saw the picture, they saw the mileage, they saw the price, and they clicked. Uh, so in a lot of cases, more valuable than regular search traffic. Um, cost per click is only $1.69, which is cheaper than, and this is a NYC Metro where things are expensive. Um, the, the, it's cheaper than most search ads. The same time we measured five chats that started we me measured four one minute phone calls um, there's the, there's another phone call view that we're, we're tracking which generate 33 um, phone calls 44 store visits and of course a lot of VDPs so for this five five thousand uh, dollars you got the three thousand people who are uh, clicked on a card that they were interested in based on all the information they had about it and on top of that you generated all these conversion metrics including uh, 44 store visits. So very, very strong metrics and the VLA ads have gotten even better since since we started running this. All right, let me move myself. Uh, beyond Google ads. All right, so obviously uh, VLAs are very Google ad focused. Um, I always like to give an uh, alternate view for those who are maxing out Google ads or maxing out VLAs and want to do more, right? Um, interestingly enough, and this slide is from Microsoft, uh, but interestingly enough, uh, Microsoft ads came out with uh, vehicle listing ads before Google did. Uh, one of the very, very few things that I've seen them kind of be ahead of Google on, uh, but they actually are, are a little bit unique. So you see on the right, it looks fairly similar to, to Google vehicle listing ads. You can see the car, the image, the mileage, the price. What's interesting with, uh, with uh, Microsoft vehicle listing ads that's a little bit different from Google is it shows outside of search. So for, for example, here you're seeing um, on, uh, on, on, uh, micro, on Microsoft uh, homepage, someone searched for a specific car. Not only are the shopping ads showing as vehicles for sale, but you see on the right side, um, the, the car show up itself and gives you some more uh, options to click through it. Uh, at the same time, they have uh, integration with all their other products. So this is on MSN. So the, the ad here that you're seeing for this GMC Yukon uh, is also a vehicle listing ad that, that feeds from uh, a feed very similar to Google's that actually shows up on the homepage of MSN. So this is something unique to Microsoft where with Google it's search-based and is on Google search. With Microsoft, it integrates with more of their uh, wholly owned properties, obviously like MSN um, and a couple others. So um, definitely something worth exploring if you're if you're already doing vehicle ads and seeing good results and just want to want to experiment with something more. Um, I, I would highly recommend trying out Microsoft ones. All right, final thoughts. Um, so vehicle ads, I think, is going to be a very, very powerful tool heading into 2023. I think similar to shopping ads, which Google rolled out a year ago, um, it takes a little while for them to work out the, the kinks and make it better. When it initially rolled out, um, the cost per click was a lot higher for for uh, the VLAs then made sense, right? But over time, as they fine tuned it, it got better. Uh, their tuning, how the ads look, the, 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 the size of the text, what information is pulling in. And I think at this point, it's gotten to be a very good and strong product. Um, I think it'll only, it'll only get better from here. I think similarly to e-commerce, where when Google rolled out Google Shopping ads 10 years ago, and a lot of people were hesitant on it, now I don't know a single uh, e-commerce store that is not doing shopping ads. So I think similarly, it will become a, a core product of advertising automotive. Um, and 
aside from it being even more successful in the future, the numbers so far and all of these case studies that you see in front of you are, are things that were done a year ago when they were still in beta and did not work as well. But overall, uh, the clients we have done it for, the cost per click has been a lot lower than search. Um, the conversions conversions have been a little bit mixed. I'll, I'll tell you, it's not right. It's uh, I'll give you full, full transparency, both sides of the coin. Uh, the only negative that I've seen from VLAs is when someone clicks, they so they see the car on Google, right? They're on Google. They're seeing all the different cars listed there and they click into one of them. In a lot of cases, instead of staying on that dealership website, people are cl clicking back and going back to Google and clicking another car. So people who are clicking uh, the VLAs are just less likely to stay on your website. But ultimately, as you saw from the case study, the metrics are still strong. It's still driving store visits. It's still driving uh, phone call, text forms. And uh, I think uh, as the product gets more refined, as Google Shopping did, like I said, 10 years ago, I think the results will get a lot better from it. And I think consumers in general are, are intuitively um, looking for something like this, especially in the used car space. If they're if they're searching for a yellow Honda Civic, um, without a doubt, if you have a yellow Honda Civic, you should be showing them a picture of your yellow Honda Civic, right? As opposed to having a search ad that just says, oh, we have Honda Civics. How much more powerful is it to actually show them the yellow Honda Civic they're looking for and show them the miles of it, the price, where your location is, and you're only paying for that click if someone clicks that they say, this is the exact yellow Honda Civic that I want, the price makes sense to me, I'm going to click on it. And only in that case are you are you paying for it. So I think overall, very, very powerful. Um, I'll just read through the data up here. Advertisers who complemented the existing search campaigns with vehicle ads uh, saw a 25% average increase in conversions. So this is with the same mass spend. They're now getting 25% more conversion by moving a little bit of their budget to uh, VLAs. And as you saw from our case study, it doesn't have to be a huge part of your budget. It could be 10, 15%, uh, but just moving a piece of that to complement the search ads is is very, very powerful. And the, the, two, uh, the two case studies here from from Google um, saw huge increases uh, even even as this was in beta and did not perform so well. So I would highly recommend everyone consider vehicle listing ads. The setup could be complex, so I would recommend you reach out to an agency, uh, us, us at Smart Sites or any other agency who could implement it for you. A lot of times your website provider might be able to offer it or implement it, uh, but if not, we're always, uh, always happy to help. and. Uh, again, I think this will be a very, very important product uh, as we head into 2023. And as I pointed out a couple of times now here, I think it's very complementary um, to the search ads that most dealerships are already doing. And it only only enhances enhances their marketing. And I think as used car sales becomes much more important for everyone, um, this is really a differentiator and a way to uh, move your used car inventory, and as we saw, you could really customize the setup of it, right? Uh, if you if you customize it in a way that makes sense for your dealership, in terms of oh, once every couple months we gotta move all the old inventory, right? Um, that's created its own ad group. Let's push that ad group. If you create the right structure for the VLAs, it's very powerful to assist your used car department in moving the right inventory at the right time at the right price. That's all I have for you guys today. I speak very quickly, but luckily this is recorded, so you could uh, replay it if needed. Um, again, my name is Alex Mellon, uh, Smart Sites. You're welcome to uh, Google and search about us. We're industry agnostic, work in every industry. I speak in every industry. Um, and uh, I, I think um, more. I'm, I'm myself a huge auto enthusiast, and that's why I'm, I speak at all these automotive conferences. But um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions if anyone wants to reach out. My email address is alex at smartsites.com. So if you have any questions about VLAs uh, or anything digital for your dealership or even outside of your dealership, uh, I'm more than more than happy to help. And hopefully uh, I'll see you in person at Digital Dealer. Uh, if not this one, then maybe the one in the future. Thank you.